today I am going old school with this Johnny Mentor of Heroes Oathbreaker deck. It is landfall in a celebration to a Johnny no longer being Phyrexian. Hello, Planeswalkers, Oathbreakers, and nerds of the internet. Welcome back to the Signature Spellbomb YouTube channel. Today I have an Ajani Landfall deck, and it is exactly what it appears to be on the label. This is a throwback deck from my personal collection that I love. So let's get into it. A Johnny Mentor of Heroes costs three, a green and a white. He is a four loyalty planeswalker that has three abilities. The first is to distribute three 1-1 one -one counters amongst one two, one, two, or three creatures we control. And plus one is we look at the top four cards of our library. We may reveal an or creature or planeswalker card from among them and put it into our hand and put the rest on the bottom in a random order. And his minus eight is gain a hundred life. So two plus ones and a minus eight. Having said that, our signature spell is Haro. This is a staple for landfall decks. It's going to let us sack a land to get two lands to replace it. Since it always is going to net us a land or two in a weird way that will pay for the uh, commander tax on the spell. It's not quite as good as a spell that gets us two lands without losing one, but since we are playing Landfall, we're kind of okay with that. Next, we have Admonition, Admonition Angel. For three and three white, it is a flying 6-6 six, six Landfall creature that says whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we can exile a non-land permanent other than it so this is a great removal spell for the deck it is a little expensive but close to the end of the game this will help us keep dangerous things off the board i might remove it because oathbreaker moves a little bit faster and six mana is very doable in a landfall deck it might still be a little too slow when it does leave the battlefield you return all exiles or exiled cards under it to their owner's control elvish rejuvenator for two and a green is a 1-1 one, one. when it enters the battlefield we look at the top five cards of our library and may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped we put the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order this is land not basic land so that might change people's opinion of it for certain decks embodiment of insight costs four it's a four four with vigilance it says landfall creatures we control have vigilance and whenever land enters the battlefield under our control we can have target land become a three three creature with haste until the end of turn Emerial angel for two and two white is a three three flying landfall creature it says whenever we play a land we create a one one white bird creature token with flying Amiria shepherd for five and two white is a Flying 4-4 four, four with landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we may return target permanent card from our graveyard to our hand. If that is a land, if that is a plains, we may return a non-land permanent card to the battlefield instead. So really good options there, very good recursion for our deck. Something to think about here is some of these high cost cards could probably be replaced with that new instant, I wanna say. You pay uh, X and two green and get uh, X one one dryad forest creature tokens. Simply wasn't in budget, and this is one of my personal decks. Evolutionary Sage says for one and a green, whenever we have a land enter the battlefield under our control, we proliferate, and he's a three two. So not the best at line. A lot of stuff will shock him out of play, but that proliferate is really good with the Johnny. I've had that moment where I gain the 100 life where people have decided they don't want to play anymore, which I guess isn't great, but it does make that a win condition. Fertilid lets us go get lands by removing one win counters from it. I'm sure you've seen this if you've played Commander. It's a really good solid card. It isn't quite a staple in this format, but it's still really good. Keeper of Fables for three and two green is a four or five creature. It says whenever one or more non-human creatures we control deal combat damage, we draw a card. Keeping our hand full is really going to help us continually play those lands we need to do our crazy shenanigans. 
Uh, core Cartographer for 3 and a right is a 2-2 two -two core scout. Whenever it enters the battlefield, we search our library for planes and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Mutani Yavamaya's Avatar is a Reach Trample 0-0 zero zero creature that gets plus one, plus one for each other land card we control and each land that's in our graveyard, which works really great with Haro. If we pay one in a green, we can return two lands we control to their owner's hand and return Mutani from our graveyard to our hand. So it's nice that he's this big beefy creature we can hit with. It's also great that he has his own rescue ability to save him printed on the card. Morasa Root Grazer is a 2-3 Vigilance that we can tap to put a land from our hand onto the battlefield, or we can tap to return a land we control to its owner's hand. This can guarantee us a landfall tr trigger every single turn. Raging Balos for 4 and 2 green is a 6-6 six, six Trample Landfall creature that whenever we have a land enter the battlefield, we make a 4-4 four, four Beast, which is beautiful for going wide. Seder Wayfinder, when it enters the battlefield, we look at the top four cards of our library, put a, a land from among them into their hand, put the rest into our graveyard. This is a good way to get some lands in our graveyards for some of those other things that care about being able to play them back from there or about the count in the graveyard. Spore Mound for three and two green is a three three with landfall that is gonna give us a one one creature token every time we play a land, which is beautiful. Spring Bloom Druid is basically Haro, but printed on a Druid. Sullivan Acolyte is a 2-3 with Vigilance. As long as we control six or more lands, it gets plus two, plus two. And so do all the other land creatures we control. Rove Warren for two and two white is a 3-4 Vigilance landfall creature that whenever land enters the battlefield, we exile target permanent card to mana value three or less from our graveyard. When it dies, we put each permanent card exiled with it onto the battlefield under the control of that card's owner. This is just a really great way to um, recur a whole bunch of stuff we've lost. It does say target permanent, so if we do have some lands in our graveyard, this will help us get them back onto the battlefield. We're probably gonna attack with him pretty aggressively once we get enough stuff under him just so we can get the opponent to kill them or they'll take three damage, which we don't care either way. Waker of the Wilds, uh, we pay X and two green and we put X 1-1 counters on target land we control and it becomes an elemental creature with haste. It's still a land, so pretty good way to make some land creatures. Far Wanderings is our first sorcery, so we're getting into our spells now. We're pretty much out of our creatures. We search our library for basic land card and put that card onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. We have seven or more cards in our graveyard. Instead, we search our library for three basic land cards and put them into play tapped and then shuffled. So this card is really good on turn three, but it's also pretty good later in the game after some stuff has gone down. Kadama's Reach lets us search our library for two basic land cards. One goes into our hand, one goes into play tapped. Nissa's Revival lets us search our library for three basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Then we shuffle and gain seven life. Condemn lets us put target attacking creature on the bottom of its owner's library. Its controller gains life equal to its toughness. Return of the Wild Speaker will let us draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures we control or non-human creatures we control get plus three plus three till end of turn. So depending on where we are in the game, this is either a massive draw spell or a mini overrun. Rolling Regrowth is just essentially a worse Haro, but it does do a lot of the same things. It just forces us to do basic lands rather than any land. Sylvan Reclamation for three, a green and a white. Let's us exile two artifacts or two enchantments and has basic land cycling of two. Abundance, whenever we would draw a card, instead we can choose land or non-land. Instead, we reveal cards from top of our library to we reveal a card of the chosen kind and put that card into our hand. We put other, all other cards revealed this way on the bottom of our library in any order. This card can help us guarantee us a land when we need one for landfall. It can also help us not get a land when we desperately don't need one and we need something else to play. Colony Heart Expedition for one in a green has landfall. Whenever we do put a land into play, we put a quest counter on it. When we remove three quest counters from it and sack it, we can search our library for two basic lands and put them into play tapped. Retreat to Myria has landfall. Uh, whenever we do play land, we either make a 1-1 one, one core ally or creatures we control get plus one, plus one till end of turn. 
Retreat to Kanzu uh, does pretty much the same thing. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we put a 1-1 counter on a creature or we gain two life. Rights of Flourishing says at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Each player may play an additional land on each of their turns. There are better cards to play in this spot, but I find at a commander table, a little bit of group hug like this can guarantee you a little bit of wiggle room. And we're going to be able to use this and abuse this way more than our opponents in about 80% of games. The Mending of Dominaria is a saga for three and two green on Verse one, we mill two cards, and then we may return a creature card from our graveyard to our hand. On verse two, we do the same. On verse three, we return all land cards from our graveyard to the battlefield, and then shuffle our graveyard into our library. Then we have Zendikar's Royal. For three and two green, it has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we create a two, two green elemental creature token. So a lot of token strategy stuff you're probably noticing in this deck. Let's get into the lands. There's a pretty robust land package. Blighted Woodland also has the ability to be sacked to get us two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Cryptic Caves lets us sacrifice a two draw card if we control five or more lands. Evolving Wilds lets us go get one of our basics of our choice. We have Force. We have Cross and Verge, which uh, taps for a colorless, or we can sack it to look for a forest or plains. That really uh, is going to guarantee us a landfall trigger late game. Also, if we need to mana fix, like we're missing a green or white card, it'll let us go and get it. That's going to help with some of those more expensive uh, multi-color, multi-mana pip cards. Myriad Landscape lets us sacrifice it to go get two basic land types and put them onto the battle. Two basic lands, sorry that share land type and put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. So this will get us two force or two planes. Naya Panorama will let us fix fetch for a forest or planes and taps for colorless. We have our planes. We have a Selesnia Guildgate because it is the budget option. You're always going to see some budget lands in my decks right now for most of my decks. Celestia Sanctuary is a bounce land. Bounce lands are good in this deck because it lets us get an additional landfall trigger on the following turn. Um, and it does tap for two. Terramorphic does the same thing Evolving Wilds does. And that is around the circle. We've now looked at the whole deck. I hope you liked it. It is one of my favorites. It is an oldie, but a goodie. And it's not something people always expect. One thing I like to mention here, ramp is pretty good for this Ajani because when you can ramp, you can play him a little bit earlier at five cost. A lot of people don't play him, so he's a pretty underutilized planeswalker. Uh, feel free to use this as a shell and swap out as you see fit. It is a budget, so it's a place to start, not a place to end your Oathbreaker career. Having said that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and thank you for stopping by.